Bahari, Shalom. First thing and foremost, giving all praises to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Barak the Dumb. To you, hopefully, elect out there. Today is April 27th, the year 2022, man. The year that Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai is going to turn up out here. You know? Because as it tells you in the book of Daniel, man, the saints are being worn out. You know? And as well as it tells you in the book of Micah about how this is not our rest. All right. You see, America was never set up for you so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native American Indians to get comfortable. All right. Because this place was set up to be pure hell. It was, it, it was, a, <clears throat> it was set up to be a, a maximum security for you, for you Israelites, man. You see, you know, you Jake wonder why they're catching hell on all sides, man. It's because again, this is not our rest. You know, this is the, this is not the time to be, um, you know, because Jake, even two thirds for the most part, in their spirit, they long for the kingdom, but because they lack that vision, all right, they lack the vision, they don't have that eye self, right? Um, they try to establish the kingdom here in in in, in, in captivity, in bondage. You see. And again, America was never set up for us to, to, to get comfortable, no complacent. You see? So that's why we catch hell on all sides, man. You know? You so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native American Indians. All right? This is why we catch hell on all sides, man. And it just, it just seems like our people, we can never get a break. But that's how it's supposed to be. Because the Habashim Shah, man, for one, he needs us to be on the edge, you know? He, he keeps us in a uh, he he keeps us in a a, a, a constant state of, of of basically reminding us that again this is not our rest you know the Lord uh, he purposely does this to constantly remind us you know and why we need to seek Yahweh by Shema Shai all right but you see again pertaining to the two thirds they they're trying to establish the kingdom in this kingdom. They're trying to establish our our kingdom, the righteous kingdom, and, and mix it in this kingdom, and it, 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 it's, it's just not going to work. It's just not going to work, man. But you see, the one-third, all right, the hopefully elect, those of us, man, we understand through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shema Shai that, hey, this ain't it, man. And I'm constantly reminding myself and just telling myself the water of Yahweh Shema Yahweh Shai that this is not it. All praises to Yahweh Bashima Shah. This is not it, man. This ain't it. This is not the end game. This is not the end of the line, man. The water Yahweh Bashima Shah that this is not it. Because if it was it, then we'd be finished, but we'd be through. We'd be through, man. You see? And then, man, you know, again, Barakata Yahweh Bashima Shai, which Yahweh is the true name of who the world ignorantly calls God. And all things are done in the name of his only begotten son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus. His name is Yahawashai. All right. I'm going to get this real quick. Because again, to show how far left we went, a uh, part of prophecy, uh, uh, part of the Lord's program, he said that he would basically uh, uh, take his name off of us. He would take his spirit off of us, right? Because we went so far left, all right, that pretty much, you know, the Lord didn't want nothing to do with us for a period of time. But again, Barakatah Yahweh Ba'ashim Shai, you know, uh, we've been, due to, due to the, 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 the sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice of Yahweh Shai, all right, we've been, given the opportunity to be reconciled back unto the Heavenly Father. And with that being said, with that being said, all right, you know, being reconnected with our power, coming back into this heritage, this truth, this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of who we were, you know, because um, I'm going to read this real quick in Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 9, it says, For then will I turn to the people a pure language, a pure language, which goes back to the Lashuan Kodash, the, 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 the holy tongue. You know? Um, or Salakia. 
uh, 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 the, the the Holy uh, the Holy Spirit, Slakia. You know, um, but the 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 Holy Tongue goes back to the Hebrew. All right, you know that being our original language. You know, at one point, the whole earth, even all the other nations, at one point, we were all speaking Hebrew, which is the pure language. You see, and again, that's a part of coming back to our, our true heritage, all right? You know, coming back to our true heritage, right? Learning the pure language, because again, the Heavenly Father, His name is in the, 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 the Hebrew, all right? And the only begotten Son, His name is in the Hebrew. You see? Yahweh Hashem Yahusha, that's, that's the Hebrew. That's the, the, the pure language. You see? And again, we've been, like I said, Due to the fact that we um, we uh, fell away as a people, well, now we're coming back to the remembrance of these things of who we were, our 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 natural language, you know. But again, it says, "For then will they, for then will I turn to the people of pure language, that they may all call upon the name of Yahweh Bashemah Shai to serve Him with one consent." You see. Because a, a righteous, like I said, trying to establish, Jake trying to establish a righteous kingdom here on this earth. Uh, excuse me, because the kingdom will be established on the earth, but two, two empires can't rule at the same time. You see, you can't serve two masters. At, you, you can't serve two masters. As the scripture says, you're going to love one and hate the other. You see, you think that Yahweh is going to rule here with Esau and Edom. You're sadly mistaken. So this is why Esau, he has to be taken out of power, man. He has to go. Because he's shown us what not to do. You know? Because the whole earth is in a decrepit state right now. The whole earth is decaying right now. Right? Hey, Esau, he's destroying his own people. He's destroying himself. You see? But, you know, looking on the bright side of things, because, you know, Lord's world of that number... Being that we're the future judges of the earth, we're the future rulers, we're being groomed and prepped, all right? You know, um, the future kings, man, Lord's will. Well, uh, a king, he knows both sides of the aspect. Uh, he knows both sides of the spectrum, the good and the, 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 good, the, the, the good and the, the, the bad, you see? So, like I said, looking on the bright side of things, because, again, being in this captivity... All right. Again, we've been shown how not to rule. We've been shown what not to do. Being under Esau and Edom, the so-called white man being under his rulership. All right. We know what not to do. All right. We've seen the wickedness, man. And this is why, like I said, man, hey, Esau, he's, he has to go. He has to go. Yahweh Shah's not going to come back and rule with, the, with these people, man. It's just, no, nah, man, Esau has to go. You see, and we're seeking a righteous rulership, man. A righteous kingdom. And this is what's currently, as we speak, this is what's being established. Start with the elect. All right. You see, the tabernacles of, of, of David, the Lord is closing, the, the, he's closing up the breaches thereof. You see, all the 12 tribes are coming back. You know, all the 12 tribes coming back. To, you know, we're going to be one, one nation again, one people. As I said here, I'm going to read it again. Zephaniah 3 and 9, for then will I turn to the people of pure language, that they may all call upon the name of Yahweh Bashim Shai to serve him with one consent. So you see, all the 12 tribes are going to be on one accord in the kingdom. And it's already taking place now, you know. It's already happening now. You see, because like I said, the, the, the tabernacles of, of David, the Lord is closing the breaches thereof. You know, which King uh, uh, King David during his during his reign, it was symbolic for for it was symbolic of the kingdom because during King David during his reign, he had the nations under subjection. You see, and in our kingdom, we're going to have the nations under subjection, and that's how it was set up by default. It was set up that way by default, you know, because hey, kings they don't they don't have to lift a finger, you know. You see, and hey, in our kingdom, we're not going to have to lift a finger. That's what. That's why we're going to have 
slaves, bondmen, bondwomen, handmaids to do to you know to do all that for us. You know, even our women, our women, they're not going to have to you know, uh uh uh, uh you know, uh, lift a finger. They're going to have slaves. Their slaves are going to have slaves. You see, and this talk because you know. Here it is, all the nations have had their opportunity to rule. All the nations have had their chance to be in power. But when the topic of so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native American Indians being in power, now everyone wants to be upset. Now, now it's a problem. When the talk of the Israelites being in rulership, right? It's a, it's a problem with everyone. You see? But nevertheless, you know, hey, at the end of the day, Yahawashai, he's going to settle all, he's going, he's going to settle the score, all right? You see, because there's a lot of talking going on right now, you know? All the scoffing, you know, people want to talk shit. Well, hey, Yahawashai, he's coming to, to, he's coming to squash all that, you see? And we're coming into those times now when, hey, you know, the Lord, man, you know, the Lord's not going to be doing, we're coming into the times now where, where, the Lord's not going to be doing too much talking, man. You know, because, hey, we're coming into the, the we're, we are in those times when, or we're coming into those times when the Lord is, is he's, he's uh, sealing the ark, man. The spiritual ark is being sealed. You see? Because you people don't want to take heed to the words of Yahweh Bashim Shai. All right? You people don't want to take heed, right? Well, hey, like I said, the Lord, we're coming to the times where he's not going to, he's not going to be doing too much talking, man. He's just going to show you people why he is to be feared. All right. Because the Lord is to be feared, man. Our people are still stuck on this Jesus juice. The, the, the worshiping of this Cedric Borgia, right? You know, which there's no, there's no, 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 going back to this Jesus guy, man. This Jesus character, right? There's no J in the, in the Hebrew alphabet. So like I said, you know, or as I read, you know, we're being turned back to a pure language, all right? The, 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 the Hebrew. You see? When Yahushua walked the earth 2,000 years ago, they weren't even calling him Jesus. The letter J wasn't invented, invented until recent history, you know? So, you know, um, like I said, they weren't even calling Yahushua Jesus when he walked the earth. You see, because... Who, who the world calls Jesus is not the true Messiah. All right? Google, Google can't even tell you that. You know? Who these people, who they call Jesus, that's not the real, that's not the real Messiah. All right? And a lot of people are going to be very disappointed, all right, when the real Messiah, which is a so-called black man, all right, and a stir man, all right, cracks forth through them, them, them clouds, man, you know? Looking at you people, man, just speaking as a man, because, you know, hey, you know, Jake, man, you know, you know, some Jakes, they got that, that stoic look, man. Some Jakes, they got that stern look, and you just know not to mess with them. Well, hey, Yahweh Shai, hey, you know, aside from the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, hey, Yahweh Shai, he, he's the ultimate Jake, man. So, like I said, when, when the real Messiah, like, like I said, this guy who they call Jesus, he's not coming, he's not cracking... Uh, uh, cracking forth through the clouds to give hugs and kisses to you people. No, nah, man. When the real Messiah shows up, hey, again, it, it's going to, if, if, if who the world calls Jesus was coming to, 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 to give out hugs and kisses to everyone, then why does the scriptures describe that day, the second coming of who they call Jesus, why does the scriptures refer to that day as a, uh, as a dark day, as a, as a dreadful day? Because again, when Yahweh Shai shows up, hey, it's not, he's not going to be playing no games with you people, man. When Yahweh Shai shows up, hey, again, a lot of you people, uh, a lot of you people, well, pretty much all you people outside of the elect, you, you people are going to be in trouble, man. When that day, when that day comes, people are uh, uh, just at the sight of this, seeing Yahweh Shai, a so-called black man, crack forth through the clouds, man, you know, just at the sight of it, people are going to be dropping dead of heart attacks, man. Drop a dead of cardiac arrest. Just at the sight of it. You see? And this is the job of the prophets. This is the job of the men of the Lord, man. You see? 
ushering in the second coming of the world called Jesus, all right? You know, we're basically introducing the world to, to who the real Messiah is, man. Because again, hey, you know, the, 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 the true Messiah, according to the scriptures, he's not a nice guy. You see, when Yahweh was walking the earth, hey, he wasn't a, he wasn't a, he wasn't a nice guy, man. If Yahweh was walking the earth today, he wouldn't be a nice guy, man. You know? He wasn't a, <coughs> he wasn't a nice guy. He wouldn't be a nice guy if he was on the earth today, right now, physically walking the earth. He won't be a nice guy, you know. He'd be that he'd definitely be hated today, just like he was over two thousand years ago, man. You know, is that your house shot? Hey, he was cursing. He was cursing Jake out, man. You know, he was cursing Jake out. You see, and do do the spirit of the Lord, man. You know, we being transformed into His image. Right, because um, I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna get this. Matthew chapter 7 I'll start at verse 22 It says Many will say to me uh, Salakia, Verse 21 Matthew 7 to 21 Not everyone that saith unto me Lord, Lord Shall enter into the kingdom of heaven You see because people think that um, It's just as easy it's, it's, it's as simple as just you know, because, uh, uh, you know, these Christians, man, they're like the biggest hypocrites, you know, because these Christians, they they have the nerve to, to think that they can live a life of wickedness and sin and just and just, you know, when that time of tribulation comes, they'll be they'll be saved. They be they'll be raptured. They have the nerve to believe that, you know, because real repentance goes into being converted, man. Uh, being changed you know you can't say I repent and then go back to eating pork smoking cigarettes smoking marijuana so on and so forth that's not repentance because again that's what these, these 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 Christian churches man like I said they're the biggest hypocrites you know they have the audacity to think that they have they could just live a, a life of wickedness man and just walk right into the kingdom it don't work like that you see but that's what they teach, man. All you got to do is accept the Lord and Savior, right? And you can be saved, right? But hey, even Israelites, even Israelites that are, um, are in the truth and that know the names of Yahweh Bashim El Shai, all right? Israelites that are in the truth and they know the names, a lot of them are going to get saved because a lot of some of the two thirds, believe it or not, consist of Israelites in the truth, believe it or not. You see? Some of these Israelites in the truth consist of the two-thirds. You see? So you see, man, in that day, like I said, you know, um, people, you know, thinking that this is a game, that this is a joke, you know, and Yahweh Shah, he wasn't a nice guy, man. And he's not a nice, he's a he's a, a very stoic and stern man, you know? Because in that day, hey, the Lord's going to be doing a lot of, uh, 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 hey, man, the, the biggest cold shoulder, man, is, is, is coming. A lot of you people that are playing games, when that time comes, a lot of you are going to get rejected. A lot of you are going to get the cold shoulder. A lot of you are going to get uh, turned away, man. You see, and going back to what I was saying, because the spirit of Yahweh Shema Shai, you know, you know, to the hopefully elect men, the hopefully elect brothers, all right, we are being built in that image. You see? Because I know personally, hey, and I'm sure I can speak for brothers, man. When you, when, when we're around certain brothers, <clears throat> when, when we are all around certain brothers, man. Hey, like I said, I know me personally, man. I see Yahweh Shai within these brothers, man. You know, I see Yahweh Shai in these brothers. Because I was going to make the point that when it comes to the men of the Lord, um, to these people, to everyone else, right? 
This is the close, believe it or not. This is the closest that you're going to get to Yahweh Shai on this side. You know? To all you people out there, when it comes to the men of the Lord, all right? This is the closest that you're going to get to Yahweh Shai on this side. Because again, we are being transformed into his image, to his likeness. You see? Because the, uh, um, what am I about? Uh, I'm going to read it again in Matthew 7 and 21. It says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. So again, even the Israelites that are in the truth, that know the name, all right? Some of the Israelites in the truth that know the name, they're not going to get saved, man. Like I said, some of the two thirds consist of Israelites in the truth. See? It says, But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. And clearly these Christians aren't doing the will of the Lord. You know? They say that you don't have to keep the commandments. They teach that the laws are done away with when clearly the scriptures say the Lord is not come to, to, to destroy the law, but to fulfill it. Let me get that real quick. I think that's in Matthew chapter 10. Matthew, Matthew 5, Salakia. For these fake and phony Christians that teach that the laws are done away with, right? Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law, so don't even let it come into your mind when it comes to the law, statutes, and commandments that they're done away with. All right? It says, For the prophets, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. You see? So, again, when it comes to the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Shai, they're not done away with. Yes, we're under grace, you know, but you, you, you fake and phony Christians, you have that completely, you know, uh, uh, they talk about, uh, they, 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 they talk about when it comes to us, the Hebrew Israelites, they, they, they like to cry that, you know, we take the scriptures out of context, you know, when in reality, you people, you fake and phony Christians and all you other people, man, you're the ones that, take the scriptures out of context, man. You know? You people are the ones that take the scriptures out of context because, yeah, we are under grace, right? You see? But that, that is, it's not an excuse to, 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 you know, just willingly break the law. You see? We're under grace, but that just means that, you know, now we, we, we have a, a, a time period to where, you know, we can change. We're, we're going back to that repentance. We got to repent. We gotta change, you know. We've been given the opportunity to to um, you know, uh, make amends with the Habash Shai. Get get on the Lord's good side, so to say. You see, because when this grace period when this grace period ends, like I said before, hey, the Lord He's not gonna be doing the talking, doing any talking. You see, because hey, man, we're coming into a time of serious judgment. Serious judgment. We're coming into a time of serious judgment. You see. And the scriptures go to how all of our works, all of our works, man, you know, is going to follow us up into that time of judgment. You see, whether it be righteousness or wickedness, you know, this is why, hey, man, you know, we just uh, uh, hope for the best, man. This is why, you know, we try to be as diligent as we can because at the end of the day, we are worthy. All right. At the end of the day, the scriptures talk about how the Lord is not unrighteous to forget our works. You know, at the end of the day, our righteousness is as a filthy rag. All right. So basically, we'll never be able to do enough. But nevertheless, we're putting our best foot forward in hopes that again we'll be found in the Lord's good graces when He brings this judgment. See, that's what it's about, man. Working out our own salvation with fear and trembling. You see, so this grace period, again, we are under grace, but that's not an excuse to willingly break the laws, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Shai. You 
You see? Like I said, you people, y'all, y'all say that we like to take scriptures out of context. No, man. That's what you people love taking the scriptures out of context, man. No scriptures, there's no scripture in the Bible that talks about willingly breaking the law, statutes, commandments of Yahweh Hashem Shai willingly. You know? But that was it on that. Going back to Matthew 7. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 again. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. So you see, like I said, this is why we're trying to be as diligent as we can in doing this work. Because again, all the works that we do do, you know, Lord's will, it's an acceptable sacrifice, right? All these works are going to follow us. All of our works are going to follow us until that time of judgment. See, and when judgment comes, we're going to be judged based off of our works. You see? And another thing, going into, uh, uh, again, the fact that we have the opportunity to, to, you know, be reconciled back into the Heavenly Father, you know, through the sacrifice of Yahweh Shai, His blood, all right? A lot of you, you fake and phony Christian men, you, you, you take that for granted. You know? Y'all take that for granted, man. You see, because, hey, you know, when the time comes, Yahweh Shah's blood is not going to cover two-thirds of you, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native American Indians. You see, the Lord is going to require your own blood. Your own blood is going to be required in that day. And, hey, as it tells you, man, do death by pain. You just, you're just going to have to die horrible deaths on this side, man. And, 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 you know, be born into the kingdom through one of the loins of the elect. See, but again, hey, read that last part again. It says, but he that doeth the will of my father, which is in heaven. See? So ask, a, ask, ask, a, ask one of these fake and funny Christians, what is the will of the heavenly father? And they can't even tell you that, man. They can't even break that down properly. You see? What does it tell you in the Our Father's Prayer, right? Uh, um, um, go to it real quick since I'm right here. In Matthew, <clears throat> Matthew chapter 6, verse 10, it says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. You see, a lot of you, you fake and phony Christians, you read the Our Father's Prayer, you, you have no idea what you're asking for. You have no idea what you're praying, praying for or praying about. All right, because this is a part of the Our Father's Prayer, and as it just said, it, it said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. You see? So the will of the Father in heaven, hey, it's going to be uh, play, it's going to play out here on this earth. Order, at the end of the day. Order is going to be established. Righteous order. You see? But you fake and phony Christians, you believe that the law, statutes, and commandments are done away with, and you believe that you can, you know, just just do whatever you want. Well, that's out of order, man. That's that's not that's not the will of the heavenly Father. You see, we're supposed to first and foremost reprove ourselves, get ourselves cleaned up, be baptized through this word, and go and teach our people, reprove our people, and let them know that they're going off. Like I mentioned before, you know, you just are wondering why, as a nation of people, we catch hell on all sides, man. Well, hey, it's because. Uh, having that mindset that you Christians, the, the, the fake and phony mindset, or that the, the, the mindset that you fake and phony Christians have, right? We're thinking that you, you know, the laws, statutes, and commandments are done away with. Now we can do whatever we want. That's what got us in this predicament in the first place. Like I said, we went so far left, man. We went, we became so disobedient. We became so degenerate that the Lord just said, I don't, just, just take my name off them, take my spirit off them. You see? Having our mindset is what's got us in this predicament in the first place. You see? Because if the law, statutes, and commandments were done away with, why, do, why are your churches still collecting tithes, man? Why are they still collecting money? Why are they still passing those collection plates around? If the law, statutes, and commandments were done away with, you know, then, 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 you know, go, 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 you know, I'm not even going to say it because, you know, Jake is going to get the, the, the wrong impression, but... 
you know, like you got these guys, man, talking about they're basically promoting adultery, right? The ISUPK promoting adultery, right? You know, but if the law of statutes and commandments were done away with, then, you know, you wouldn't have a problem, uh, 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 you know, with another man sleeping with your wife, you know? Go murder, right? Go steal, go kill. If the law of statutes and commandments were done away with, you see? But again, you fake and phony Christians, man, that mindset that you have is what is it's what's got us in this predicament in the first place. Because contrary to proper belief, all right, there is a thing called reincarnation in the Bible. We've been here many a time, many times, all right, more times than we can count, you see, and we've had lifetime after lifetime after lifetime to get it right. You know, lifetime after lifetime after lifetime, we've been disobedient, rebellious children. All right, you know, we just been rebellious children, man. And this is why the Lord said that He would, uh, uh, um, He would just deal with the elect. He would, He would deal with a remnant. Because again, two thirds of the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native American Indians, all right, two thirds of you, again, as I quoted, you're just gonna have to die on this side. All right, and you're just gonna have to come back to one of the laws of the elect. To where then you're going to be uh, 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 born into the covenant. Which that's another thing these fake and phony Christians, you know, they, they have no idea pertaining to the new covenant. No, we're not in the new covenant yet. If we were in the new covenant, then, you know, why? We, if we were in the new covenant, why did we still sin? Why did we still go off? You see? So we're not in the new covenant yet. All right? But it's coming. It's coming. You see, man? But um, reading on in Matthew, going back to Matthew 7, Matthew chapter 7, verse 22, it says, Many will say unto many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. It says, And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So you see, the point that I wanted to make was the fact that, like I said, because this isn't going into Yahushua literally when he comes out, the when he cracks through the clouds, right? You know, he's going to profess, I never knew you, right? He's not going to uh, 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 literally say this when he cracks through the clouds, right? But how is this going to take place? It's going to take place by way of the, of the, 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 the spokesman, of Yahweh Bashem Shai, the men of the Lord, the prophets. You see? Because again, the, 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 the men of the Lord, all the spokesmen, they speak on the behalf of Yahweh Bashem Shai. You see? And like I said, in that day, hey, Yahweh Shai, hey, Yahweh Bashem Shai, there's going to be a lot of uh, 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 cold shoulders, man. The Lord's going to, a lot of you people are going to get rejected. And how are you going to get rejected? You're going to get rejected by the men of the Lord. Because like I said before, that when it comes to the men of the Lord, they are the closest that you are going to get to Yahweh Shai on this side, believe it or not. You see? So again, we're being transformed into his image, into his likeness. Because hey, again, for you people that think that Yahweh Shai, who you ignorantly call Jesus, right? You think that he's a nice guy, well, he's not. All right? Hey, man, the Lord is cold, man. And that's the spirit that he's been putting on us, man. A lot of brothers, man, but putting that cold spirit on us, man. That cold heart. You see? Because, hey, a lot of us are numb, man. You know? A lot, it's to the point, hey, we can't wait to see judgment uh, be executed out here. We can't wait to see judgment play out. We can't wait to see you you, you people, especially you two-thirds, get destroyed, man. We can't wait. And if you think that we're going to shed a tear for you, again, you're sadly mistaken. We're not going to shed no tears for you people. Because everything, you people, everything that you've got coming to you, you deserve it. You deserve it, man. You know? Hey, we're not worried about the ungodly. We're not worried about... Because here it is. Those of us are the hopeful elect. All right? We're trying to do the right thing, man. You know, we're trying to please our power to the best of our ability. And like I mentioned, hey, we know we fall short every day. But we're trying to, to, to you know, 
uh, 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 do the best for our power, man. We're, we're trying to please our Lord, man. But we catch so much hell, man. You know, we still catch hell, right? On all sides, man. You know, we just, we just can't get a break. Well, hey, how much more you people that don't give two dams? Because you people, you have absolutely no no care in the world for you. How about Shema Shai? Keeping his, his laws, statutes, and commandments. You people have no care in the world, no fear, right? But here it is, you people, you know, for the most part, man, y'all are just living it up, you know, having your way. And hey, the righteous, all right, are seeing this, and this is a part of our bitter complaint. This is a part of our bitter complaint. Because it's like, again, Lord, how, how long, like I said, man, those of us trying to do the right thing, but we catch so much hell, <coughs> you know, well, hey, these people who don't give no, no, they don't give two dams, right? They have absolutely no fear, but yet they're just, you know, living it up. How long is the Lord going to, 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 to let this go on? This is a part of our bitter complaint. So you see when the time of, of reckoning comes, all right, and it's time to answer for your crimes, because again, we're all going to have to give an answer, all right? We're all going to have to give it. To, to, to give an answer all of our works whether they be in righteousness or in wickedness we're going to have to give account for it so you see when that day of reckoning comes man and hey you know you people that have been playing games all right you see hey like i said hey when the lord gives you the cold turkey man gives you the cold shoulder you know what what can you do what can you say you know you're not gonna be able to say anything man but reading on or verse 23 again, Matthew 7, 23. And then what I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So again, this isn't going to be how shy literally when he comes, cracks through the clouds, you know, telling people depart from me. I never, I, I never knew you. No, man, this is going to come by way of the prophets, man. But see, again, you know, you know, and we see it all the time, you know, people come up to the camps, you know, People may recognize us or whatever. They come up to the camps, you know. They they, they ask questions, you know. But they, they they don't really inquire, you know. They they don't really inquire, you know. You got Jake all the time. They come up to the camp, so I'll be back next week, you know. You know, don't see him again, you see. Or you got Jake's now, like the elder apostle Raka. He you know he just brought it out about how. Uh, a guy, man, in the, in the camp, the Dallas camp, he pretty much, you know, uh, uh, took his packing bags and he left, man. You know? You know, he said, pretty much said he didn't want to do this anymore. And he left. Right? So you got guys like that. You see, in that day, um, when these prophecies really start jumping off, a lot of these guys, man, they're going to come back, and, and, and women, all right? You know, you got women that have men that are in the truth. You know, some of these women, they, they end up leaving. Right? Well, hey, in that day, a lot of you are going to try to come crawling back, and you're going to get rejected. You see? So, so, because that's pretty much what this is going into. Because like I said, Yahweh Shah is not literally going to be in the clouds, or, you know, in the sky, telling you know telling people, I never knew you. No. All right? This is, this is going to more so play out. By the men of the Lord, because a lot of you people are going to try come running up to us. A lot of you are going to get rejected because you see, the men of the Lord in that day, they're going to have the spirit of discernment. You know, like when Isaiah four one comes around, right? When Isaiah four one comes around, all right. Hey, a man of the Lord, he's going to be able to discern whether, uh, you know, uh, um, you know, your your your, you know. Uh, one of the one of the 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 the, the one third women or two third. The elect are gonna be able to discern these things. You see, and hey, uh, uh, the one third com uh, compared to the two thirds, man, that's a relatively small number. Meaning that the two thirds, man, that's that's a that's a lot of people, man. All right, so basically, a lot of you people are gonna get rejected. You're all gonna have a handful. That actually, you know, get accepted, but the mass majority of you people are going to get rejected by the men of the Lord. You see, 
the mass majority of you are going to get rejected. Like I said, hey, the Lord, man, he's been putting a spirit on a lot of us, man. A lot of brothers, man. Hey, you know, a cold-hearted spirit, man. Hey, you know, you people, man, you better come correct, man. Because, hey, a lot of us, we're not in the mood, man. We have, at this point, we have a zero, a zero tolerance level, man. We're not putting up with any shit. You know? Going back to what I mentioned earlier about how the Lord keeps us in a constant state of where he's reminding us that this is not our rest. You know? Because like I said earlier, the Lord needs us to be on edge, man. He needs us to be on edge, man, because the times that we're coming into, we can't be emotional. The shit that we're about to see, the shit that we're about to witness, all right, we can't be emotional. You know, we can't be emotional, man. You see, and this is a part of the, uh, let me see if I can find this. See if I can find this real quick. Matter of fact, I'm gonna go to the prophecy real quick. So, um, Zechariah chapter 13, verse 9. Matter of fact, I read verse, verse 8. Matter of fact, I read verse 7. It says, Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, and against that, and against the man that is my fellow. Saith the Lord of hosts, smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered, and I will turn mine hand upon the little ones. Now, who are the little ones? That goes into the elect, all right? The anointed, those that were sanctified from the very beginning. Because this all, all this is the, uh, it's a thing of predestination. You see, before any of us were even a thought of, Yahweh Shema already had this mapped out. Who would make it? Who wouldn't make it? All right? The one-thirds. The two third, the Lord already had this mapped out. You see, because again, contrary to popular belief, there's no such thing as free will. All right, not according to the scriptures, there's no such thing as free will. It all goes back to predestination. Those they, you got some that were predestined to make it, you got some they were predestined not to make it. You see, and that's just how you how about Shema Shah, That's just how he set up in, 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 in his program. So. Pertaining to the prophecy when it concerning the two thirds. Thank you very much. Verse 8, Zechariah 13 and 8, it says, And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. So this two thirds, the two parts going into the two thirds, two out of every three Israelites that you see is going to die. See, they're already rejected, as it said, man. They're going to be they're going to be cut off and they're going to die. But two third, two out of every three Israelites. And that's a lot, that's a very, that's a lot of Israelites, you know, that's a lot of Israelites, you know, a lot of Israelites are going to die, man, because, hey, you know, you got a lot of uh, the, the, the foreigners, you got a lot of Israelites who, they look like the other nations, but their lineage goes back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all right, that, hey, man, a lot of Israelites are going to die, man, but it says, but the third shall be left therein, all right, 
And again, going back to verse 8, the last part of verse, oh, I'm sorry, verse 7, the last part. It says, and I will turn my hand upon the little ones. So you see that this, this remnant, all right, this is who the Lord is coming back to. This is who the Lord is currently dealing with right now, the elect, all right, those that were sanctified from the very beginning. All right, this is who the Lord is dealing with uh, as of right now. You see, because again, um, this cycle, this constant cycle between the Heavenly Father and the nation of Israel is not going to keep, because like I said, we've had lifetime after lifetime after lifetime after lifetime to get to get this thing down pat, you know? But the Lord's not going to keep, you know, killing us off and bringing us back, right? Killing us off and bringing us back. No, man. All right? You see, and according to prophecy, we believe that, hey, this is the, the, this is the last go-around, man. This is the last go-around. So this is the last time to get it. And this is why, again, this is why the Lord said that he would just ultimately leave behind a remnant. All right? And from there, you talk about a, a so-called global reset. Well, the real global reset is going to take place when Yahweh Shai comes. All right? Like I said, two-thirds, they're going to die, but they're going to come back through the, through the one-third, through the elect, through the Lord of the elect. All right? You see? Um, and, and again, from there, everything's going to be refreshed. You see? But, um... Verse 9, <laughs> pretending to the one-third, it says, And I will bring the third part through the fire and refine them as silver is refined. And I will try them as gold is tried. You see, so, again, because we're going through the refinery process right now. All right? The refinery process. All right? You see, because, again, um, you know, we we had to, we had to, uh, uh, become new creatures in Yahweh Bashem Shai. You see, because this this flesh that we're in right now and the current and the mindset that we have before we came into this truth, that you know, uh we won't we we won't make it, man. We won't make it into the kingdom. You see? So we had to be uh, uh our whole mindset had to be changed. Alright? Because our whole mindset, man, again, before we came into this truth, it was corrupted. You see? So that's why I said, this is why we're being transformed into the image of Yahweh Bashim Shai. We're being transformed into his image. Because again, the, 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 the image of this world, man, hey, listen. Everything pertaining to this world is, it's, 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 it's contrary to Yahweh Bashim Shai. Like I said, these fake and phony Christians, you think that you could just, just have this mindset, right? And just, just, just walk into the kingdom without being tried, without being refined, without being tested. You're sadly mistaken, man. You're sadly mistaken. Because not everyone, not even, even with Israel, man, not every Israelite is going to have access to Yahweh Shah like that. You see? Not every Israelite is going to ha just have access to Yahweh Shah like that. It's pretty much going to, so to say, be like a, a, a seclusive club, man. And it, or is it ex uh, uh, exclusive club, so to say. Because it's going to be with the elect. It's going to be with the elect. And again, this is who the Lord is is uh, dealing with right now. Starting with the elect, within the elect. All right, the 144,000 men, 12,000 men out of each tribe that you read about in Revelation 7. All right. You know, and from there, you see, from there, you know, because like I said before, as we speak, the, the 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 government, our government is being established, man, right before our very eyes. The government that's going to rule in 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 Yahweh in, in, in the kingdom. All right, that government is being established right now. You see, well, like I said, we're being groomed, we're being prepped. Lord's World War of that number. All right. You see, because, hey, again, if we're of that number, man, hey, we're the future kings, man, the future rulers, man, you know, we're the future powers that's going to be governing the earth. You see, but with that being said, hey, we had to be refined, we had to be put through, through the refinery process, and that's why I was going to get this, 
Because again, this flesh and the mindset that we had before we came into this truth, it's not going to make it. It, you know, it wouldn't make it. You know, it wouldn't make it into the kingdom. So that's why we had to, you know, um, we had to be transformed, man. We had to become new creatures. I'm going to read this. In Proverbs. Proverbs, chapter 25, this thing will load up. So uh, Proverbs chapter 25, Verse 4, it says, Take away the dross from the silver, and there shall come forth a vessel for the finer. All right? I don't think that's what I wanted, but... Nevertheless, this dross, all right, is again, um, when it comes to you Israelite men, you so-called black, Hispanic, Native American Indian men, all right, the Lord compares you to fine gold. You see, he compares you to fine gold, but we, 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 we become dim. You know. You see, and when you put gold, silver, when you put these precious elements through the refining process, it removes all that filth. Or it removes all the dross, the, the the filthiness. You know, and at the end of that refining process, hey, the, the those precious elements they come out. A uh, 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 pure, you see. So this is what, this is the process that's taking place with us now. All right, the Lord is removing the dross. All right, He's removing the filth. He's purging us. All right, this is why we go through our our afflictions, man. You know, you see, because again, hey, the Lord needs us to be on point. We can't be emotional with the times that we're coming into. You see, and that's what the society teaches. You know, you see the whole earth is on an Esau's vibration. So with that, that's why you see these people, man, they're just, just, you know, you know, they make all these uh, 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 zombie flicks, right? Well, hey, they're mocking you Israelites, man, because you Israelites are dead, spiritually dead from the neck up, man, you know, because you people have no idea. You're walking around here having no idea who you are. All right, the lineage that you come from, the stock that you come from, you're walking around calling yourselves African Americans, Puerto Ricans, right, Cubans, so on and so forth, right, names that have no significance to them, no history to them, right. But when you go through, when you go through our history, all right, you know, you go through our through our true heritage, Judah, Naphtali, Asher. Right? Names that have significance to them. Names that mean something. You see, again, you know, we're, 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 hey, as I mentioned, you know, we were gold. The Lord compares us to fine gold, but we became dim. You know? We became dim, man. You know? But nevertheless, hey, being that we're coming back into our true heritage, we're coming back to the remembrance of who we were. All right? Our true nationality. All right? Again, this is all a part of the dross that the Lord is removing from us. All the filth the Lord is purging from us. All right? Because, hey, believe it or not, man, hey, we're coming back to our... You see, the scriptures talk about being changed to, from our, our uh, first estate. We're seeking to get back to our first estate. That those, those angelic powers, man. You see? Meanwhile, two-thirds of our people, they want to stay here. And they want to join hand in hand with the wicked, with the enemy. You see? But now, man, again, you know, our mindset, hey, again, like I said, the, the, coming into this truth, our whole mindset changes, man. Our whole thinking, way of thinking, it, 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 it changes. You see? 
Because as the brothers be breaking it down, man, hey, you know, Jake, man, we don't have a financial problem. All right? You know, all these, you know, because, you know, Jake, they try to come up with these different movie, uh, movies, these different movements, right? Black Panther movements, right? Jake want to, you know, establish their own towns, do their own thing or whatever, but you see, our problem is sovereignty. The brothers break it down all the time, man. We have a sovereignty problem, man. Our problem is sovereignty, man. You see? And this is something that Yahweh Shai is going to establish, you see, because, hey, in our kingdom, we're not going to have to we're not going to have to report to Esau. We're not going to, not going to have to work these bullshit nine to five jobs, man. You know, like I said before, hey, kings, hey, listen, kings don't lift a finger. You see, and in our kingdom, hey, we're going to be kings, man. We're going to be gods. All right, those angelic forces, man, that were with Yahweh shot in the beginning, that brought everything into existence, that brought creation into existence through the blueprint that was given to them by the heavenly Father. You see, that's where our mindset is at, man. We're king. We, we think kingdom minded, man. This place is garbage, man. This place is straight up trash. You know, like I said, the, the earth is in a decay state. The earth is dying. You know, we're dying. You know, we all, we're all sick in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Right? You see? But hey, in our kingdom, is going to be the complete opposite, man. In this kingdom, we look forward to death. But in our kingdom, hey, we're going to live, man. <laughs> we're going to truly, sincerely live. We're going to breathe real air, drink real water, man. Like I mentioned before, hey, order. Everything is going to be put back into order. Order, real order is going to be established on this earth. You see? And that's going to take place Um, because, matter of fact, before I get that, I'm going to finish it. Well... Let me get this in Ezekiel chapter 22. Ezekiel 22, verse 18, it says, Son of man, the house of Israel is to be, is to me become dross. All they are brass and tin and iron, and lead in the mist, and lead, in the, and in the midst of the furnace, they are even the dross of silver. So you see again. Going back to that dross, all right? You know, the Lord planted us to be a, a noble vine, but we become a degenerate plants, man. We become, we became unrecognizable to the Heavenly Father. Well, hey, the water you have by Shema Shai, all right, we've been given the opportunity. We're coming back into, like I said, man, our true heritage, our true nationality. We're coming back to true kinghood, man. You know, again, hey, we're going to be gods on this earth, man. Like I mentioned with King David during uh, his time, that was symbolic for what we're going to have in the kingdom. Because, hey, one of the many, many, many perks in the kingdom, we're going to have these nations under subjection to us. The nations, they're going to pay tribute to us. You see? And, and, and King Solomon's kingdom, during, during the time that he ruled, you know, it was a time of peace. King Solomon, he didn't see war. All right? And also during that time, all the 12 tribes, we were one. Because right now, you know, you got a lot of division, a lot of back and forth, you know, between the tribes and, you know, all this beef will aid. Um, um, like I mentioned, King Solomon, all right, during his rule, it was a time when all the nations, all the 12 tribes were one. You know, we were one nation. We were one people. You see, and it's going to be like that in our kingdom. You're not going to have no Bloods versus Crips. All right, MS-13. We're not going to have any of that in our kingdom. All the 12 tribes are going to be one again, man. And it's going to be peace. We're not going to see war in our kingdom. So this is what King, King David and King Solomon, during their time of rulership, all right, this is, that, that was symbolic for what we're going to have in our kingdom. Like as read, man, hey, that they may call upon the Lord with one consent, man. You see, the whole earth is going to be under the, the vibration of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. You know? You know, hey, our concubines, you know? Our women from the different nations, you see? Because that was one of the mistakes that King Solomon, he made, right? You know, with all his, his wives and his concubines, right? You know? 
it, it got to a point where King Solomon, he was built on altars for their different idols, right? You know? And you see, hey, in our kingdom, it's not going to be like that, man. Our concubines, the women that we take from the other nations, all right, they're going to be, they're going to have to worship our power. The nations, they're not going to have the freedom. There's not going to be a, no such, such thing as freedom of religion in our kingdom. No, you're going to, the nations, they're going to have to, you're going to have to worship your Ha'abash Shemar Shai. We don't want to hear Buddha. We don't want to hear Allah. We don't want to hear none of these false idols come out your mouth. Because the whole earth is going to be under one consent. It's going to be under the vibration of your Ha'abash Shemar Shai. See, and this is what the 144,000 men, elect men, all right, they're going to be the lawgivers, you know, keeping everything in check, make sure everything is on point. You see, this is what we're coming back to. We, again, we had to learn this on this side because, again, kings, judges, rulers, they know both sides of the spectrum. They know the good and the evil. You see? You see, man? But nevertheless, hey, as I read, you know, the Lord is removing this dross from us. We're being purified. We're being perfected in the spirit. All right? We're being perfected in the spirit. You know? And the last step is going to come by way of, of, of when we actually physically get changed because, again, these, this flesh, man, is not going into the kingdom. The very skin that we have on right now, the very vessel that we're in right now, it's not, it's not going into the kingdom. You see? We're going to get completely whole new different bodies, man. Changed in the twinkling of an eye. All right? We're going to shift from out of these bodies. All right? Going back to that first estate. Those angelic powers, man. That was with Yahweh Shai in the beginning. You know? Because these are chains of darkness. The scriptures talk about the chains of darkness. You know? Talk about this flesh. This flesh is weak. This flesh is a joke. So we're going to get changed back to our first estate. Being those angelic powers, man. You see, this is where our mind is at, man. This is where our mindset is at. You see, coming back into true manhood, all right? You know, kingdom minded, man. We're kingdom minded. Because the hell with this place. You people, you can have it, man. You can have this place. You Israelites, two thirds of you, y'all can have this. Because this ain't it. This ain't it, man. You know, this is not it. But, um, we get this Lamentations chapter 4, verse 1. How is the gold become dim? How is the most fine gold changed? You see? Again, the Lord compares us to fine gold, man. You know? It says, the stones of the sanctuary are poured out in the top of every street. Now, what is this gold talking about? And read verse 2. says, the precious sons of Zion. You see how the Heavenly Father looks at you, 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 you Israelite men? You so-called Negro, West Indian. You so-called... Uh, Haitians, you so-called Latino, Native American, Seminole Indian men. You see how the Lord looks at you? Again, it said the precious sons of Zion. <laughs> you see? Because this is what we're coming back into, like I said, man. All right? Because again, at one point, we were walking around here calling ourselves niggas, spicks, right? Guatemalans, Mexicans, right? No, oh, man. We are the precious sons of Zion. We are the precious sons of the Heavenly Father. The precious sons of the Heavenly Father. You see? We have the mindset, because hey, uh, and this is how we got to look at ourselves, man. To you brothers, this is how we got to look at ourselves. All right? Because hey, we are many most highs, man. We are uh, Yahweh Juniors on this earth. Now, it may be hard to believe, being that we are in the current state that we are in right now, you see, but don't let that, you know, affect on how, don't let that uh, affect how you look at yourself, how you're, how you're supposed to view yourself, because we're only here because we sin. You see, we're gods in exile, man. We went off, all right? The Lord had to teach us this lesson, 
which is why, again, we've been put in America, all right? Like I said, man, America was never set up for us to be established. It was never set up for us to get comfortable, all right? The Lord put us in America. He put us in his captivity as a punishment, you see? We've been put here as a punishment, but hey, like I said, we've been, God, we're God's in exile, well, hey, we're coming back into the, 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 our true heritage, man, our true nationality, coming back into the remembrance of who we are, man, you know? So this is how we have to look at ourselves, as precious sons of the Heavenly Father, man. It says, the precious sons of Zion, comparable to fine gold, so you see? The gold that I was talking about in verse 1 is talking about you Israelite men. All right? The precious sons of Zion were compared to fine gold, man. You see? This is how we got to look at ourselves, man. Because, hey, the nations, they know who we are. As much as they hate us, you know, they, they, they try to be like us, man, because, hey, when the scriptures talk about how you are the salt of the earth, it's talking about us, man. The Lord put a different spirit in us, all right? That these nations, they try to mimic, but they can't because they have no flavor, all right? And you see, those are the other nations that have flavor, all right? You know, hey, nine times out of 10, 9.9 .9 times out of 10, their lineage goes back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which means they're Israelites. You know, pertaining to those of the other nations that may have flavor, you know, like someone like a Jackie Chan, all right? Hey, man, that's a Jake. Jackie Chan is a Jake, all right? You know, someone like a Conor McGregor, that's a Jake, man. That's a Jake. You know, a lot of those Irish, a lot of those Irishmen go back to, go back to Jake anyways, you see? But it's easy to tell when it comes to the nations, all right? You know, uh, you know, sometimes it's easy to tell, you know, these guys that come out of these nations, but they have some form of flavor, you know, it, you know, it's easy to tell that they're Israelites, man, they're, that they're Jake's. Because again, the Lord just put a different spirit in us. We are just different. The Lord created us to be different. But our people, they want to be like a people that was counted to them, that was counted as less than nothing, man. These other nations, they are looked at in the eyes of the Heavenly Father, they are looked at as less than nothing. And this is who our people try to, who they look up to, they look up and inspire to be these people who are less than nothing, man. You know? But um, it says, how are they esteemed as earthen pitchers, the work of the hands of the potter? So you see, man, you know, here it is, the Lord compared us to he compared us to fine gold. But we became like earthen pitchers, man. We became like pots, clay. You see? Walking around here with no self-confidence, just, you know, like I said, man, just calling, you know, referring around, referring, refer, referring to ourselves, you know, to, to, to nationalities that have no significance, that have no meaning to them. Well, hey, again, we're coming back into the remembrance of who we were. So have the mindset, look at yourself as a, as a, as a, as a God, man, you know? And, and you women, you know, hey, you're not queens, man, all right? You Israelite women, you're not queens. You so-called Negro, Latino, or Latina, Native American Indian women, all right? You're not queens, all right? Because a queen goes back to a whore. A prostitute, which in this sense, in, in today's day and age, you know, hey, uh, the title fits, but, you know, nevertheless, if you, um, you know, repenting, all right, then all that can be forgiven, man. All that can be forgiven, you know, men and women, you know, but you women, you're the, 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 the princesses, man, you know, and start looking at yourself as one. If you're trying to do the right thing and if you're sincere, if you want to do the right thing, all right, you know, but you men, hey, you know, again, have this mindset, man. Have this mindset as you come into this truth, as you grow in this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, all right, understand the stock that we come from, man, you see.
Because hey, these are the words of the Heavenly Father, man, comparing us to fine gold, man. The precious sons of Zion, comparing us to fine gold, man. This is the Heavenly Father, man. This is how he, this is how he looks at us. This is how he views us. See, so who are these people to tell us any different? Who are these people to tell us any different, man? Are people that are less than nothing, they're considered less than nothing to tell us anything different. You see? I was going to get something on. Um, it just slipped my mind. Just slipped my mind. Matter of fact, I'm going to get this. Because what makes us stand out even more, talking to the Israelite men, Israelite men, what makes us stand out even more is this true wisdom as an understanding. You see? You know, because we may not know it, we may not see it, but for the most part, a lot of these people, they see it, you know. <coughs> they know there's something different about us. They can see the glow in us. They can see our shine. They see it. Like I said, we may not see it, we may not know it, but these people, they can see it. They can see something different about us, man. And again, what causes that to happen? This truth, this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. You know, as the scriptures say, wisdom causes a man's face to shine. Rough paraphrasing. You see? I'm going to get this. I think that's Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 12, it says, I will make a man more precious than a fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir, right? And again, talking about the Israelite man, all right, because again, this truth, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, all right, you know? Though what we do, how we conduct ourselves in the eyes of these people, they may, you know, frown upon, you know, we may be fools to these people, but you see, in the eyes of Yahweh Shemel Shai, we're committing very honorable acts, man. You know, very honorable acts, man. Very honorable things, you know, because that's, at the end of the day, man, that's what, it, that's what it's all about. You know, because like I said, man, the hell with these people and what they think, man. We're trying to please Yahweh Shemel Shai to the best of our ability. And again, the, the works that we do, the sacrifice that we commit, all right? You see, these things are pleasing to the Heavenly Father, man. You see that? And, and with that being said, when it's all said and done, and our time comes, you see, hey, Lord's will, man, the hopefully elect, uh, the hope, hopefully elect brothers, man, hey, we're going to have favoritism in the eyes of Yahweh Shema Shah. The Lord's going to show us favoritism. You see? Because even if we try to hide it, hey, in that day, we Pretty much, you know, we won't be able to hide it because, you know, like I said, this is going to be something different about it, about the Israelite man in that day, about a man of the Lord in that day, man. He's just going to stand out in that day. Like I said, we could try to hide it, you know, but you won't be able to. However that plays out, but nevertheless, we won't, we won't be able to. See, man, because again, we're going to have favoritism with the Lord, man. See, and again, hey, you know, this is what we're being, we're, 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 we are being, being groomed for this, man. We're being trained up for this, man. All right? Because again, when it's all said and done, when all hell is breaking loose out here, hey, the spirit of Yahweh Shema Shah is going to be on us, and we're going to move different. You see, we're going to be moving different, because when all, when shit hits the fan out here, all right, these people, they're going to willingly be going to the so-called white man, right? They're going to be willingly going down to those to those chipping stations, right? Taking that karagma, 
Well, hey, those of us, you see, again, the spirit is going to be different vibration on us. We're going to move different. While everyone is going going left and right, hey, we're going to be going straight. All right? You see, man? So in that day, again, people are going to know there's, there's, there's something different about there's gonna be it's gonna be something different about us, man. And people are gonna know it. People are gonna see it. Like I said, that's already starting on the side, man. People are already sensing when it comes to when a men, men of the Lord come around. People know something different about us, man. People know this, this is something different about us. You know. And I'm gonna just say, man, because as I always say, it's a thing of confidence, not cockiness. You know. You know. And I'm gonna say, um, embrace it, man. Just embrace it. You know, just embrace it, right? I'm going to read that again. Isaiah 13 and 12, I will make a man more precious than fine gold. And you see, again, going back to um, how the Lord is going to reestablish order, all right? Because what's taught in this society, what's taught in this society, because this whole society is based off of woman worship, right? What's taught in this society is that the, the, the woman that she's the prize right in the society they teach that the man has to get down on one knee you know when the scriptures talk about the, the scriptures tell a man not to give his strength unto a woman but that's exactly what these so-called men do in this society right because this is what this is what's being bred in the society man a bunch of weak beta sent men you see so in this society it's taught that the woman is taught that she's the prize right Everyone has to go out their will for her. Right? Well, here it just said, I will make a man more precious than fine gold. You see, because, hey, and this is something that we understood back in the ancient world. All right? You see? Because, hey, at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, Yahweh Shemel Shai, he's dealing with the men. All right? He's dealing with the, he, he's dealing with the men. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm going to read on. It says, and even a man, then the golden wedge of Ophir. So you see, again, uh, uh, an Israelite man in that day is going to be more precious than fine gold, right? But even more so, this truth was not an understanding because when all hell breaks loose out here, all right, there's no internet. When it's martial law out here, all right, hey, we're going to have the answers. You see, and in that day, you people are going to be trying to come, you know, looking for answers, trying to figure out what's going on. What do I need to do? Should I take it? Should I not? You know, and hey, going back to what I was going into earlier, hey, a lot of you people are going to get rejected, man. You see? A lot of you people are going to get rejected. A lot of you, you're just going to have to figure it out. Proverbs, because again, at the end of the day, Yahweh Shemal Shai, he's dealing with the Israelite man, all right? Contrary to what's taught in this society, the woman, she's not the prize, all right? The man is the prize, but this is why Yahweh Shemal Shai has to bring, he has to humble this place, he has to reestablish order, you see? Because when all hell breaks loose out here, you best believe these women, they're not going to be in this, I don't need a man attitude, Right? They're not going to have this I can do battle by myself attitude. You see? Because in that day, you're going to find out very quickly you do need a man. And this is what's going to make, this is why a man of the Lord is going to be precious in that day, man. Because again, hey, there's going to be a different, there's going to be something different about a man of the Lord in that day. You know? When everyone else is, is freaking out, you know, they're losing their wits, right? They're going crazy. Hey, the men of the Lord, they're going to be stable. <laughs> As the scriptures tell us, man, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. All right? This truth, wisdom and knowledge and understanding is going to be our stability. So our head is going to be on our shoulder. Unlike these people, they're going to be running around like a chicken with its head cut off. Again, they're not going to know what to do. Right? Well, hey, again, the men of the Lord, they are going to have the answers. But again, when it comes down to it, Yahweh Shemel Shai, he's dealing with the men. He's dealing with the man. All right, that's what I'm going to read. Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 4. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is 
to the sons of man. So you see, when it comes down to it, Yahweh Bashmah Shai, he's dealing with the men. And again, when Yahweh Bashmah Shai reestablishes that order, these women are going to find out whether it be the easy way or the hard way. All right, they're going to find out that they, uh, in fact, they do need a man. They do need a man. You see, because hey, um, when it's all said and done, and all hell breaks loose out here, all right, hey. Women are going to be getting spiritual power, you know. You see, man, women, women are, aren't going to be getting the spiritual power. You see, and that's one way a man of the Lord is going to stand out in that day. All right. You see, because, hey, men of the Lord, man, hey, they're going to be calling down fire from heaven. All right. They're going to be picking up, you know, 10 story buildings, you know. The men of the Lord are going to be doing all type of incredible things in that day, man. You see, again, when 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 there's famines out here, there's no food out here, and people are eating one another, right? You see, uh, somehow, some way, Yahweh Bashim is going to is going to make it to where the men, all right, the Israelite man, he's going to be eating, he's going to be drinking, they're going to be straight, they're going to be laughing while everyone else is, is going to be, you know, uh, crying and weeping. A, a, a sorrowful spirit We've been in mourning The men of the Lord Hey We're going to be laughing at you people man You know Because you made mockery of, You made mockery of us Well hey yeah, How about Shemel Shai he's a, he's a just power And he's a power that deals with balance You see So when the tables When the tables turn And the script uh, the, uh, the script Is flipped You see Hey You people are going to Are going to become the laughing stock You people are going to be Getting laughed at man Mocked to scorn. Matter of fact, that's what I was going to get earlier. Real quick. Proverbs Proverbs And again, how is this going to come about? It's going to be by way of the men and the Lord because This isn't literally going to be uh, Yahweh Shai when he comes Seeing everyone burn up He's going to be laughing at people No it's going to be by way of his, his, his spokesman, all right, his ambassadors. Because again, the Lord is putting a very stern and stoic spirit on us to where, hey, for the most part, we're numb to a lot of things, but we don't care about a lot of things. A lot of us are cold-hearted, man. A lot of us are cold-hearted. And it's better that way. The Lord needs us to be that way because, again, the times that we're coming into, what we're getting ready to witness, what we're getting ready to see, we can't be emotional. We can't be emotional, you know. And we were already forewarned that, you know, these some of these things are going to happen. Some of us are going to lose loved ones. All right. And if that's the case, then a lot of us are to the point where, hey, so be it. Let the, let the will of the Lord be done. But you see, the average individual in this world, man, they, that, this is something they can't grasp that. They can't grasp that concept that we're OK. All right. If we have to lose loved ones, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're OK with it, you know. We 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 we're, we're, we uh, accepted the fact that it's a possibility. You see, and so be it, because we don't understand that. Hey, you know, some of our families, some of our loved ones, they consist of the two thirds. That you know, that's just what it is. So we know that. Hey, some of our families, some of our loved ones, like I mentioned earlier, you know, the two thirds they had to die. Be they had to die. Horrible deaths on the side. See? And they, but, you know, again, the beautiful thing about it, about it, hey, like I said, the Lord, he's a, he's a just power. He's a, he's a power that deals with balance, man. Because those that we lose on this side, man, we're going to see him again. They're going to come back, man. So don't worry about it. You see? The scriptures talk about how this is the, the, the comforter, man. The comfort of these scriptures, man. You know, whoever we lose on the side, we're going to get him back. We're going to see him again. 
They're going to come through our loins, those who are of that number. So don't worry about it. But again, you can't have this, you can't get into these these things, man, with the, with the average individual out here, man. You see, as a brother be saying, man, hey, this truth, this truth is not for low-level thinkers. This truth is not for low-level thinkers. You see? But Proverbs chapter 1, verse 26, it's again, again, to people that think that you're how about your mouth shy, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus, they think that he's a nice guy. No, he's not a nice guy, man. All right? Yahweh Shai is not a nice guy. He's not a nice dude. You know, if Yahweh Shai was walking on earth right now, a lot of you people would be getting cursed out, man. If Yahweh Shai was, uh, was, was out here, you know, uh, uh, teaching on the Howards and Bowies, a lot of you jakes, a lot of you people would be, would be getting cursed out, man. Looking to put him to death just like you did, you know, or just like you sought to do. You know, all those years ago, over 2,000 years ago. Because a lot of you you unbelieving believers that were back then during that time, hey, you're back today, all right, in your lot to be an unbelieving believer, all right, and ultimately to receive your judgment. Because you people, you think that you got away. No, nah, man, you didn't get away. You're back today to receive your judgment. You see? Because again, we're all back today, all right, to receive our judgment. Again, we're coming into that time of judgment, the judgment, the final judgment. All right, you know, and the Lord has brought the majority of these spirits back to to receive their judgment. All right, so you you wicked uh, uh, two thirds that were back then during the time of Yahweh Shai, you're back today. All right, many of the disciples that were back then that were followed Yahweh Shai back then, they're back today now. You see, we're all in our lots, man. You know, but of uh, Proverbs 1 and 26, it says, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. See, so for people that think that Yahweh Shai is a nice guy, no, nah, man, Yahweh Shai is not a nice guy. Who the world calls Jesus, all right? He's not a nice dude. You see? And this is, again, the spirit that the Lord has put on us because, like I mentioned, when this takes place, hey, it's not literally it's, it's not li literally going to be Yahweh Shai coming out coming through the clouds and laughing at people. This is going to come way by way for the most part. It's going to come by way of the men of the Lord. Because again, you people, you mocked, you talk shit, you laughed us to scorn, right? Well, hey, the time's going to come when hey, the, the the tables are going to turn. You people are going to be laughed at. You people are, are going to be mock, uh, uh, mocked to scorn. Because this is the spirit that Yahweh Shema Shah is going to have on us. A cold hearted spirit, man. You see? Emotionless. You see? This um 14 year old kid that fell off this ride right behind me, right? You know, you still got people that are, you know, uh 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 you still got people that are, you know. Uh, in, a, in a in a so to say mournful state, you know they're they're still sorrowful about it. But hey, you know it is what it is, man. The kid got he got his judgment. He's in the spiritual realm now, all right. But nevertheless, he he got his judgment. It is what it is. You think that's bad? You just wait until your how about shy opens up judgment. You just wait until your how about shy really opens up judgment, man. Again, that's why we have to be built up because the the, the things that we're gonna see in the very near future, man. Hey, you know. You people aren't going to have the stomach for it, man. You're not going to be able to deal with it. You're not going to be able to deal with it. I'm going to read it one more time. I also will laugh at your calamity. All right? So when trouble comes upon you, all right? You know, when the Lord brings your calamity upon you, all right? And, and that's when you're going to try to, you know, uh, call out, right? That's when you're going to try to repent and get right. No, I mean, the Lord's going to laugh at you people. It says, I will mock when your fear cometh. So you see, when all hell breaks loose and, and again, when the Lord brings your calamities upon you, all right, when something's happening to you and that's when you want to try to seek the Lord, that's when you want to try to get right. No, man, it, it, for a lot of you, majority of you, it's going to be too late. And the Lord's just going to be laughing at you. The angels are going to be laughing at you, right? But even more so, hey, the men of the Lord, hey, you know, like I said, hey, we're not going to have a, 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 a tear to shed for you people, man. We're not going to have a tear to shed for you people. Because like I said, what 
you people got coming to you, man. You deserve every every ounce of it. You deserve every ounce of it. You know? Because y'all, you people, man, y'all took this for a joke, man. Y'all take this for a joke, man. And what y'all are about to find out, what this world is about to find out, is that Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai is not one, two, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 He's not one to joke about, man. This is no joking matter. This is no laughing matter, man. This is this is a deadly serious thing. This is deadly serious. We all about to find out that yeah, Yahweh Shem is not the one to be, you know, cracking jokes with like that, man. He's not one to be taken lightly. You know, y'all gotta find this out the hard way. You see? Hey, when that time comes, what can you say? Because hey, we tried to tell you. We tried to tell you. But you didn't want to listen. Alright, so like I said, hey, when it comes down to it, hey, Lord's will, the blood of Yahweh Shai, or we're going to be covered, the hopeful elect, Yahweh Shai's blood is going to cover us, but to you people, when it comes down to it, the Lord's going to require your own blood, man, and that's going to be a, a horrifying thing, man, it's going to be a horrible thing, man, you know, but hey, man, just through the spirit and the power of Yahweh Shai, Shai, able to come out here one more time, you know, I hope and pray. That this is edifying, uplifting, giving all praises to Yahweh Bashem El Shai. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Yahweh Bashem El Shai brought thumb to your hopeful elect out there. Until next time, Lord's will, Shalom.